podcast partly homeless and hacking, so <laughs> aka homeless and hacking. But are you? But you're not homeless anymore. No, no, man. You know, I'm always pretty good about that. And, you know, uh, pulling myself up by my bootstraps and getting on with things. Okay. So, what are you doing these yeah. days? Uh, well, at the time I talked to you the last time, I was just finishing my book, and uh, my sister's been editing it. What's it called? And, uh, well, my name is David Sage. That is my name. So it's going to be called so Sage it, Advice. Well, yeah, it should be. <laughs> That's a good one. Yeah, don't end up homeless in Akron. Here, <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be called Don't End Up Homeless in Akron, Ohio. No, That's the Sage yeah. Advice. Oh no, but it's it's literally like a. Uh, and I didn't steal this from High Fidelity, but, you know, he's like, I read the uh, Love in the Time of Cholera and all these things, but I have to admit, you know, Cash by Johnny Cash is one of my favorite books. And so I didn't take it from that, but I remembered that. So it's just Sage. By Sage. Sage, okay. I like mine better. Uh, nevertheless, <laughs> or don't be homeless in Akron, Ohio. I mean, that's good. You, you need a real eye catcher. What's going to be on the cover? You? Um, now there's probably a dust uh, jacket picture on the back. I said it's it's looking like it's actually come to fruition. She's been taking forever ever to uh, edit it, but uh, you know I'm in collaboration with her, and it's going to be listed and then dedicated to her. But this will be self-published. No, it looks like it's going to be picked up, man. Really? She yeah, she submitted part of it to a publisher. They're interested. Wow, um, look at you, from homeless to published author. Well, I mean, I was working on a book the whole time. I wasn't just, you know, breaking beer bottles in the alley. <laughs> well, no, I know that, but I mean, the, the, <laughs> but the hook of the story is that yeah. you were homeless. I was, sir. I come off Hatter's Island. I went up to Ann Arbor to see my sister for a while, but she's got uh, children and a husband that she's on the outs with. And uh, she didn't have any place to put me, and I, there was no hard feeling there, but I hung out and was able to see her. Uh, I'd already sent uh, most of the book to her from the island, and then, you know, I finished it when I came back to Akron, and uh, she's just, you know. So how, and, how big of a book is it going to be? Is it going to be like War and Peace, or it's going to be like that Charles know, Ramsey comic book that came out a few years ago? It's a snippet, man. I didn't, you know, I'm an, I'm an, I'm an unknown, so I didn't want people to be like, you know, it's like, as thick as war and peace, no one's going to want to read. <laughs> well, nobody knew who, uh, you know. All right, yeah. everybody's got to start somewhere, right? What about Sage Against the Machine? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. There you go. That's good. Giving you so many solid <laughs> ideas here. <laughs> no, but she submitted part of it, and um, they want it. You know, I mean, now with all this corona stuff going on, and she's in medical advertising, so she's actually thankful for this stuff because she's, like, busy. You know what I mean? Like, she's pretty busy person right now but uh, looks like a fact she submitted you part of it not the entire thing she's still working on editing the end of it but uh they want it uh in condition probably want another book and uh who's the publisher done, uh, i'd hate to not want to say it right now because contracts and lawyers it's not a, it's not a done deal i got gotcha. you do you understand I mean, I'm yes not of course I'm no i understand i, I you don't want to you don't want to Count your chickens yeah. before they're hatched, as it were. Exactly. You can't right. put all your eggs in one basket. The, uh, and other um, avian uh, metaphors. Yeah. Sure, listen, we but could uh, do being, this all day. Yeah, point being, though, they said not only do they like it and they want the rest of it, but uh, would want another book as part of the condition and off, possibly offering a stipend. What well. about Hatteras going to Hatteras? Mm -hmm. Well, see, that's the thing. <laughs> it's a little clunky. Yeah, I've already got the first line of my next book figured out. Yeah. You know, which will be, uh, Hatter's Island is the place that you go when you're broken and you can't go anywhere else. And uh, sometimes only the landscape changes. There but you we'll go. Be... Look at that. Mm. It's not a dry eye in the house, David. <laughs> <laughs> now, it, will well, there be an entire chapter devoted to me by any chance? Yes. Good. There will definitely you will be in there, buddy. I'm Fantastic. Sorry. That's what I like. All right, listen, I, I wish you nothing but success, David. Make sure you stay in touch, all right? I want the when the book is published, I want the first copy. I do. It's gonna be autographed and I'm gonna send it in there. Beautiful. You'll, you'll read it. I will. Yeah. I love to read. All right, thank you, David. Yep, thank you, man. All right, man. There's David. He used to be our bureau chief in Hatteras Island. Which is North Carolina, yes. Mm. And I think so, yeah. um mm. and he was homeless. Mm -hmm. And now he's got a book coming. Very exciting. 
You know, we've lost some listeners along the way. We lost uh, Drunk Mike. Mm-hmm. We lost... Um, like died? Yep. Mm-hmm. Drunk Mike Jr. Yeah, died uh, years ago. And, um, you know, a guy like David, who's come back from the brink of something, and uh, he's going to be a published author. And uh, who could be uh, more excited at that? Sounds like he's got a whole uh, b- bunch of things going on. Self-help book called Burn Sage. There you go. So Melania's book is coming out in June. Who's going to read that? Quit bullying. You going to read it, Pound Cake? I already read Michelle's book. <laughs> Becoming? <laughs> uh, no, I, I, I'm not going to read it. You're not? No. Okay. Don't care for Melania. Well, she's been largely silent through this whole uh, mess. It's called The Art of Her Deal. I get it. <laughs> Uh, the untold that story like of a porno. It sounds like a, a trade deal between like, oh, if you want to come to America, you have to marry Donald Trump. I, I don't know. I mean, uh, uh, hey, maybe they'll give him that same deal that uh, his kids got, where the publishing company was very quietly buying all the books themselves, so they could say that it was number one on the mm-hmm. New York Times bestseller list. The Art of Her Deal uh, comes out June sixteenth. This is an unauthorized biography. I'm sure. Of the first lady. Well, no, I thought that this was going to be a book, like she had been working on a book with someone. I didn't realize it was just somebody putting out a book about her. Oh, okay. It's basically compiling a hundred or so interviews. Yeah, because her book would probably be something more along the lines of like trying to distance herself from Trump, but at the same time be complimentary to him. Like he's just not in the, uh, no, he's just not into Putin. Yeah. (laughs) Lost it. Horrible. <laughs> amazing jokes. I say they're all amazing. So sometimes they're amazing and sometimes they're that. I want it up to it. Isn't that amazing? Yeah. I hope you think so. Gave you click, click, plume. Uh, thank you. Uh, listen, I'm on cloud nine with click, click, plume, all right? I'm never coming down. He, he I don't care what he does the rest of the show. <laughs> Right, go home, Bill. You're good. The book is <laughs> dedicated. Uh, the book is. Uh, they describe it as a picture of a woman who is savvy, steely, ambitious, deliberate, and who plays the long game. Which really kind of makes it sound like, like she's an opportunist. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, right. Well, yeah, these are all words that you use to describe like Danny Ocean. Well, you're talking to the same crowd, right? Mm-hmm. You're talking to people who like him who are going to want to read a book about her. So you have to kind of speak their language. Say, hey, he's, she's just as conniving as he is. Mm-hmm. That's I, what you guys like, right? <laughs> Buy the book. I wonder if, like, if Trump stops being president whenever that is, um, she, if she will divorce him. Because, like, she, there's no dating after that. Who could, you, who could you date after Donald Trump? Who could she date? She'd have She'd people date, lined yeah. up oh, to people. date her. Because Any people. I feel like he she, will die alone. She will have people lined up to date her. I feel like because they would be threatened by Trump. How? He, he'll be he'll, he'll happy be, to be out of the relationship. Get at him on Twitter or whatever. No, he'll he's, if he's not a president anymore and he gets to spend his twilight years not having to be tied to one woman, he will be just fine. Do you, do you yeah. think that he would F with with um, a woman who could blow up every bit of his spot? She, oh, she definitely signed an NDA when who they cares? got married. It's should, not, it's not I like, feel like you think NDAs are magical. He thinks they're ironclad. I don't, I don't I mean, think they're ironclad, but... Everyone I'm, signs an NDA, but guess what? We all still know hundreds of people who've, who've exposed things because they broke their NDA. I mean, it's better to have one than to not have one. I'm How? sure it is. I mean, it does. It feels like. I mean, I you... feel the way about the way that Alan and Bill feel about marriage is how I feel about NDAs. So I'm just like they don't do anything anyway. What's the What's a piece of paper gonna do? <laughs> Alan, <laughs> is this how you feel about marriage? I, oh, I, I, I guess it is. <laughs> I, I'd never been Bill. told how I felt about marriage, Bill. <laughs> I meant you, Bill. You, yeah, you, yeah, well, you, let's you. sorry. You love Gwen very much. I know that. <laughs> you know what I mean. Though. I've taken my share of swings. <laughs> I mean, seatbelts aren't 100% effective, but I would rather have one than not. So same with the NDA. I mean, people are threatened by lawsuits and getting pulled right, into but if court. You thought that, but but being, if you thought that your seatbelt could snap at any time and throw you through the windshield, you'd probably be a bit more cavalier about it. I mean, NDAs are great for people who are already overmatched by the person, right? If you if you work for a huge corporation and you sign an NDA, you're not going to break it because they will sue you into oblivion. Exactly. And what- if you're the former first lady, he's not going to sue her. He could. He could, but it's not going to go anywhere. It's going to get dismissed. And she, he has way more money than she does. 
and she, she'll get half of whatever he's got, whatever fake billions he's mm-hmm. got. Prenup. She'll get half of those. But okay. Do they have a prenup? I'm sure they do. I wouldn't say I'm sure they do. There are a lot of wealthy people who don't sign well, prenups. Well, if, if it's anything like his second wife, Marla, is it Marla Maples? Marla Maples is yeah. the second wife. She said that she got like $5 million or something like that. She was Which like, is nothing compared to his know. billions. And so she said, I, you know, I signed something and he gave me what he thought was fair. <laughs> so that was it. That's yeah. how I like that. Marrying rich seems like the best idea because then you just get out of it. Do you see what uh, Adele has to pay her husband? $140 million. $140 million. I didn't I even know she so had that. More. I didn't know she had that kind of money. She oh, doesn't, yeah. apparently. I guess well, but that, she's her, got like $160 million is what I saw, like her net worth. Her, um, well, that might so be much. true because yeah. that album was that 21, yeah. that album that went triple whatever yeah. platinum and stuff. So I, I mean, I guess that was years ago, but. But she still. doesn't. She's not like living a flashy life where she got cars and mansions and stuff. No, she but has a if, castle. You've, if you've got, she's a castle. Everybody in Europe has a castle. Oh. That's all there are. Is castles over there? Mm-hmm. Old castles they've retrofitted into like homes. We have McMansions here that have that, castles. That would make me never want to get married. Looking at like, no, you thought she the, was crying before. Oh, that's she's right. W- she's Man, weep- this next album must be fire. fire. She's weeping through every song, and she was married. She was already, you know. Catching well, fire through the rain or whatever. There were tabloid How? photos that were going around a couple of months ago of her like getting into a car, and she was clearly having an emotional phone call. Like she was mm-hmm. in a rain slicker, I think, in yeah. London, and she's screaming into a phone, and you're like, "Oh, now I know what she was. She's probably she screaming at her divorce. lawyer." Yeah. yeah. Wow. Because she didn't have kids. One hundred and forty. Like, like I would so get married. Is that? Just to get that kind of payout. Is that alimony or is that just in the divorce settlement? Because, like, imagine getting that know. settlement. And That's then a settlement. Like, you get then, a lump sum of $140 million. In lieu of alimony? I was going to say, do you still get alimony? Yeah, I'm good. $140 million? No, we'll it's, just, it's the we'll whole just walk thing. away after that. Alim- if you're breaking it down, like when I got divorced, you break it down by here's this much for alimony, here's this much for child support. They don't have kids, Adele and her husband. I don't think. They don't have a kid. Right? Yeah, they, yes, they do. Oh, they do? Yes, they do have kids. And I, I guarantee you, I bet you it's her future earnings. That's why it's so much. Because, like, oh, she's probably going to write another album. And he, I think he was her manager or something like that. He has something to do with the business. And she's going to have to pay him this money. So any future album she makes, she has to pay royalties to him. Ain't that some mess? Well, yeah, that's why you don't... Uh... That's why you don't want to get yourself in that kind of situation. But again, I've said it before. I'm not the first person to say it, but it always holds true no matter how rich you are or how poor you are. Divorce is so expensive because it's absolutely worth it. Because even if it's $140 million, it's so worth it that she thought to herself, if I stay married to this guy, I can save $140 million. And she still went, nope, I want out. Mm -hmm. That's how bad it was because she got skinny. And he was probably still treating her like he always treated her. I don't know how long. They I thought I read married. that he cheated on her, and he's still getting this kind of payout. He's still porky. He's not like a good-looking guy. So they didn't. No, but have... they were only married for three years. They didn't have a prenup, or this is clearly not. I, I was going to say that's there's definitely no not way. a marriage with a prenup. No way. Married prenup is love. like prenup. Lack of prenup is, uh, or if you had signed a prenup, it would say. You know, I get a million dollars for every, every year, year we're married like or whatever, you know, yeah, so that you don't end up having to cut a check for 140 million bucks. My girlfriend said she never wants to get married. I'm like, you wouldn't get married for three years if it meant you got 140 million dollars. And she's like, uh, that, I'm like, no, and she, she still said she wouldn't. That's rare, but though. Man, that's not guaranteed what you'll get. And I guarantee you she's going to fight him on that. Because what does she have to lose besides the 140 she's million dollars? She's going to write a new album and make another 140 million dollars. Nah, she's going to drag it out. because How long do you think it'll take her to put the album out? Because I need to get into a relationship and then break up I'm, so I can relate to I'm it. I'm sure the album's already done. It's just yeah. probably No, going I to, mean her breakup album. She was probably going... This divorce didn't just happen overnight. Yes, so true. I'm sure she probably already has an album cooking. And it's just, it's just waiting for the label to you know push it through. I guarantee you. I bet you he's getting some type of royalties. How I old bet. is she now? Because that's how she releases she's her like albums. She's like my age. 31, I yeah, think. Yeah, she's like 30. That's so young to have so much money. And like that much baggage because like you got a house and a baby and an ex-husband all at 30 and you're in the you know the negative hmm she because <laughs> There's a, you know why else and by the way if it's 140 million pounds that's even more it's 173 million dollars god damn so it, it might be if it's a, she's better off if they're talking 140 million dollars lizzo single still 
<laughs> yeah, she's oh, very single. Sing- you're marrying single. You're marrying Lizzo? I'm, I think she's been, she's been going steady with that flute for about you 18 months. Yeah. This settlement all makes sense because I remember months ago I heard on Wendy Williams that of she, course she, she, did. she stopped her production company. She had a, It wasn't a production company. It was a touring company. So hundreds of people were out of work because she would, like Live Nation, she would have her own touring company. And she closed that down. I guarantee you that's why. Because she has to liquidate everything to pay her husband. I bet she regrets her wedding vows. You don't know what those vows said. Yeah, she said, dude, you're getting Adele. <laughs> See what I did there, Mary? I saw it. Um, <laughs> amazing jokes. <laughs> and so topical. <laughs> and so timely it's and like, contemporary. What is this, this Del what that a was con- ever made? What a contemporary <laughs> reference that is, too. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Oh, Mercy, mercy me. <laughs> There's some dads drinking in their garages right now they with a Michelob Ultra, and Michelob Ultra and a koozie <laughs> sitting in their zero gravity chairs. We just lost it. And they hour. just spit out their mouthful, right? Oh, All over the place. Oh, oh, I may man. not agree with them politically, but that was funny. <laughs> that was a good one. Mm-hmm. Hey, right. Well, anyway. So, yeah. Do you want to go home? <laughs> me? <laughs> After that, I'll see myself yeah. out. Yeah. That's right. Uh, and again, prenups are what you say, what you agree them to be. Mm-hmm. There are people who have all kinds of prenups where they go... And you do a postnup, too. No, you, those are harder to do. But you can do them. You can do anything. Tony Braxton has one. You can do anything. But they're harder to get somebody to agree to giving you a chunk of their money after you're divorced. I think it's so much cooler and very progressive when women have to pay alimony. It's just like you stick it. I agree. It's very, very progressive. It is. I, I, hey, I, listen, I, that's part of gender parity. If you yeah. want gender parity, that's part of it. If you want equality. There are, a lot, there are some women, it's not as common, but there are some women, yep. some women paying alimony to their I know of, ex-husband. I know of two right off the top. is Halle Berry. She had to pay her ex-husband like alimony. Which one? I think both of them. Oh God! Um, and then no wonder she's always upset. And then Tony Braxton has to pay her ex-husband alimony, but I think that's dope. <laughs> I just think that's cool. Well, but if they're the one making all the money, and it's like you know, God bless Tony Braxton, but when's the last time she had a hit? Well, she has uh, lupus, or she has some, yeah, I think she has lupus or something. It's um, never so, lupus. Not lupus. Well, she has lupus, and she can't <laughs> perform as much as she wants. So the, the only time she does go on tour is when she has to pay pay her ex-husband there you go unsign my nda was that last big hit she had <laughs> wouldn't that be great though if she was just like totally upfront about it if she was like guys this is an alimony tour like she 100 she talked about it on on jada pinkett's uh red table talk really? show and she was just like yeah uh i can't believe my husband made me pay that debt i some, t- some days i can't even get up out of bed and now i have to get up to pay you no but- i'm saying like call the tour like the alimony tour and, like, let everybody know, like, I'm not going to lie to you guys. I hope you get a good performance, I'm but not. your tickets are going straight to this, this dude. Yeah. <laughs> like, yep. He used to perform with her. With opening act Al Be Sure for the Al E. Money tour <laughs> with Tony Braxton. <laughs> yeah, well, whatever. So, Adele, I, I still don't know how you end up. It's I think Pound Cake's right. It's got to be against future earnings because mm-hmm. there's no way if you're worth $190 million, you have to cough up a hundred and forty million of it. But they, they people have done that before. Guys have gotten sen- sentenced. Guys have gotten it's sentenced to sentenced. child support. But that's what I'm saying. When they don't have the money, and like, well, this is what you got to pay every week. Sorry about your luck. Dave Foley. Or every mm-hmm. month, whatever. They, they fight it in court, though. If they have the money to do so. But I, I, I mean, if you have a hundred million dollars and you, they say you have to pay a hundred ninety million dollars. I mean, you, there's a room for leeway there. You just fight it until you know you can't fight it anymore. Yeah, but if you lose, uh, then you've spent. You, but the, if you lose, you've spent a ton of money in court fees, mm-hmm. and you still have to give over that amount of money. If I ever become like Maybe a decade from now, who cares? <laughs> insanely rich. I mean, like I don't know what happens. I get hit by a um, iPhone truck, a Walmart or something. truck, the I don't old know, Tracy something. Morgan route. Right, like get crazy rich. I'm gonna give you money to play out some of these scenarios. Where he's just where he comes up with these things about taking private jets and we have all said that individually. We said if we ever get rich, we're giving pancakes some money just to be like just so you can see how wrong you are about some things. And I think that's his long game too. (laughs) Wait for one of us. Wait for one of us to hit it. I just know like JoJo. Does anybody remember the singer JoJo? She fought the record label for a decade and she won. Now she's not relevant anymore, but it's because they. So it was a well fought battle. But she I'm sure she got some type of settlement and now she's like back on the scene and she has like creative 
uh, whatever they call it, creative Rice. control. Yeah, yeah. And, and now she can do it because she had she signed a faulty deal. But so you can win. It just takes time. So if you f- thoroughly believe in something, then go for it. If you don't feel like you don't have to, you shouldn't have to pay your ex-wife one hundred fifty million dollars, then fight for it. Otherwise, you you lose your integrity and your pockets. Yeah, but after a while, you probably come to the conclusion, do I want to do this for the next five years of my life? Some people do. Or, oh, I can't imagine anybody would want to go through that. That that is stubborn. Mm. You talk about someone being bullheaded. I mean, as expensive as my divorce was and continues to be, (laughs) it was not a protracted situation because we weren't fighting each other. Yeah. Or I wasn't fighting her, you know? Because of the circumstances around our divorce. But some people, they just go war of the roses type stuff. Yeah. They just go full tilt boogie. All, yeah. all then, of it, you know? And custody, too. We didn't even think about that. Like, that's just a divorce. It might be a nasty custody battle. And he might get child support on top of the alimony. He's not going to get that. You don't know. She might well, be touring. Listen, she might be busy. Pound cakes, really Pound cakes America is a very... <laughs> it's a specific peek into a world that might be that could be that in some ways is Adele got Federlined somebody says right Federline. Kevin Feder- Kevin Federline he got all Britney's money and her kids he has custody of the kids well she's a wackadoo though I mean you knew he was gonna get the kids Man, but that's I... why that's how you get the money is you get the kids I don't think he got all her money first you get the kids then you get the power then you get the women <laughs> then you get the money and then you get Anyone? the tigers that's right <laughs> alright I got a break along. I got a break uh, 35192 if you want to text alancockshow.com to uh, look at some things there and you can listen anywhere on the iHeartRadio app the Alan Cox Show on 100.7 WMMS. And everywhere you go on our free iHeartRadio.